Um, this is a boring Ben tangent. Uh, I have been doing a lot of video work for doing video synthesis and experiments and stuff. And I have this uh, slightly sought after JVC VCR. It was like a consumer, high end consumer VCR. Um, uh, it's sought after because it has a time based corrector in it, which is quite nice. Um, but I also noticed uh, after playing around with a bit, it had this um, remote control, proprietary remote control interface for it um, that JVC developed. And searching around for like gadgets and stuff that work with it, I found this, which is a video capture box. Now I've taken it apart so it's a bit annoying. Uh, I only paid like two or three pounds for it so I didn't have any of the cables and stuff. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like on the website. If I go like that. You can see it here. It's ba it's, it's it sort of came around the same time as Firewire and stuff like that, but it was about 99 year, 99, 2000. But it doesn't use any technology like that at all. It just has a basic serial port on it. And whilst it can't capture video, moving image video, I think it can touch stills. And... I'm not totally sure. I just want to see it work, basically. Just cause I'm just so curious about w what it does. Um, so, so if I find the manual, I guess should have searched that. Search the manual. I'm not a robot. This is what it looks like. I'm trying to side by side. Oh, we can't really do that here. Oh. I've got an odd space. <coughs> the idea is that um, you plug it into through this special where is it? Through the special PC interface, you plug it into your computer, and then you plug this video from your VCR, and then it also connects to the deck through another serial interface. Not sure. Oh, the monitor. So you take the video out from your deck and then you send it out to the television, basically. Right. So the video basically passes through this box and out to your screen, but at the same time, in theory, you should capture the uh, <coughs> the the uh, image. I mean, this might be total rubbish, but I'm just curious to see what it how it can perform. I've played around with the software and it is it works. Well, it runs on modern Windows, with, in, and I, I'm running it in compatibility mode as well. So what I've done, is um. 
I wasn't quite sure of the pinout. You can't really find the pinout. So I've disassembled the whole box. And I found a chip. Oh, I might want to change it to... Oh yeah, it's in the right scene. I found this chip. Which is... I might not be able to get a good shot of this. A serial chip. An RST32 chip. A Cypex. Literally it has 232 in the name, so I was like, it must be the actual driver chip for the serial interface. And I found the date sheet. And from that, I found the image of the chip. And basically, I need T out, which is the TX out. See here, that's the third pin down. I found it there. And the RX is R out. No. Wait, T1 out, R1 out, which. Ah. That's different from what I was doing earlier. The third one works. Fifth should be the receiver. But that doesn't connect to anything. I found a thing here. This is uh to win. Okay, I got confused. It's the SP232A. T2N. Can't be right. Because if you look. T2N should be the CMOS inputs. Wait. This might be clearer. Which one's this? 231 and 232A. How are you supposed to know which one's 1 and 14 is Tim what T1 out? If you look up here, oh, yeah. I was hoping that R1N. I was hoping we should find T1 out just for basic to the connector and there should be R1 in which is 13. Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Ah 
So I don't know if we have basic cereal or we have something a bit more sophisticated going on. Like does it use two serial ports to transfer more data? Although I think it just goes, the official wire just goes to an RS232, PC232 port. But I don't think they have. Yeah, the standard serial ports don't have two pin out two serial ports on it, so. I found 14 and I found R1. What's this other one I found? Which is in the middle. Which is like here. And that's what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's pin 10. That's T. What? Maybe it's grounded. Because it's T2 in. So does that mean... Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. That means that the ground... Ah, right. Now, this is starting to smell a lot like... normal mini tin oh I think I have it ready here uh, yeah three is TX Ground. No, that's not the same. Hmm. Serial connections were definitely a bit of the Wild West. Uh, so what I also made up is this, which is a um really annoyingly quite a lot of serial modules you get are literally just TTL but we actually want proper RST32 signaling so you can get these boards which has a max 232 on it that can run from 3 volts I hope that will work let's try it anyway and I can just solder that onto here so RX TX ground. Oh, now I can't remember which one's which. That's definitely ground. I found that just by. You can just find it by holding there. Because there's always going to be ground on a coaxial. Now, what was it? Now we're gonna now we're gonna hope this is right. So TX is fourteen. Sixteen fifteen to fourteen. I think that was here. That is TX. So that needs to go into the RX of the RST32 interface. And this one is TX and that goes into the RX. Now, 
Let's see if this works. This is the battery pack. Box. Let's get this the right way around. You can power it to see the LED. Here's the LED. It's powered. Didn't see. Didn't seem to send anything out. Because these um these have little LEDs on them. But here's my USB port. In. This might not work because um thinking about it, this is 3 volts, this is 3 volts, let's just tack that there, and this is 5, maybe the threshold voltage is enough, now, I'm just going to have to shift the windows around, oops, Build this down here. Ah. Go the other way. Add this extra application. Can we find this very ancient from the year two thousand application, which still runs amazingly thanks to Windows? It's backwards compatibility. Called J Lip. It's called J Lib Video Catcher. Let's just get it up. Here we go. Beautiful, in beautiful windows, windows blue, and you can't see this, but I need to open my task manager. No, my device manager. So I've, um, interestingly, these old programs. Um, oh no! Can you not see that? Uh, that's annoying. can't see the dialogues. Here we go, this is hilarious. I had to make a dialogue. Anyway. COM3. So it won't let me use COM3. This is a funny thing that it does.
even though I've configured COM3. Oh. So I run it again. I change the port. This is interesting. I discovered is you can in Windows you can actually change the port name. scan you should see the this flicking I think no <laughs> oh it's gone back to com, com 2 uh, oh, the, oh the power's gone wonder if I I'm trying to re plug it back in again. Oh, oh, is it going to find it? Though I don't know what it's looking for. I think it might be looking for what I might need to have. I might need to have this plugged into the VCR. It might be just passing through the communications. Didn't think about that. Huh. Let's read the manual. There's two manuals, there's one for the hardware. It says make the video images will be displayed and they cannot be viewed on your computer monitor. When connecting the variety cables, make sure the terminals and core filters are oh, yeah. Probably not very good at making a little hacky cable. We're connecting to a video source unit with JLIP connector to a printer. This is interesting, it's quite a high resolution. Hmm. I don't have, it's just a four from this connector. I really should have a four pin uh, uh, jack, mini jack. Four. Four band TRS connector. If you look at that manual, that's the manual. This is the manual for using the software. 
Start a new capture. Turn on your PC. Okay. Start on the taskbar. Caution to not disconnect the video source unit or turn off while jail jailer video capture is running. Video source unit. Oh, so I must need to get communicating with the VCR. Damn. Select window D controller. Select the COM port. Click scan. When the connected video source unit. Ah. So I need to connect to the VCR, but I don't have cable for that right now. So that's the end of this session. Um, it's just a little, little one. But you saw here a method which is quite interesting for find if you have a serial port. You have no idea what the uh, pinout is, and especially from this era where they just made up random pinouts for different devices, probably to make them incompatible with each other, so you only bought their products. Uh, you can just, especially if it's a RS232 interface, you can just find the RS232 chip, find the data sheet, and you can use a multimeter between the chip and the connector to find the pinout. Uh, I'll do another update on this later when I've got the cable. It's probably going to be very lame in the end, but, but that's what it is. it's quite a, a strange piece of hardware that uh, has died from a, like a, barely had a, uh, well, was proprietary and barely had a life, probably only served a few hundred people. Um, it also came with a printer, which was uh, fascinating. You can see it in this manual. There was a printer. I think it was... What are those printers called? The sublimation... Mini sublimation things. You know where... I think maybe it was almost like a Polaroid. Look, here's the printer. They have this little tiny printer. I've forgotten what it's called. The... GVPT2 oh, GV-PB2 Okay, little sort of printer. I didn't buy it because like there's no way I'm going to get these cartridges. And, like I don't really have a desire to uh, print off images from video. I just thought this might make this might be quite an interesting sort of raw video capture device from VCR. I don't, and I also like would quite like to find out if it could capture an image. Not from the tape, but from video that you're passing through it. Uh, I don't know. It, d it doesn't cost a lot. It only cost about four pounds secondhand off eBay. And look, it's a crazy amount of electronics. I haven't even looked up what this chip is. Oh look, I've, I've got it on the microscope. By mistake, the J. Well, it's it'll be a it'll be a ASIC probably, a JCY zero zero six. We'll see. Nah. Oh. Is there a data sheet? Can't be. No. It's probably a custom chip, ASIC made by uh, JVC themselves. Yeah. Anyway, I hope it won't be as boring in the next episode where I can find how to get the images. Okay, bye!